Welcome back. We're going to be talking about the integumentary system in this module, so let's get into it. So the integumentary system is an organ system that consists of skin, hair, nails, glands, and nerves. So there we go. We can see this is a nail bed. This is a hair follicle. And this is the skin as well as a hair follicle and some glands mixed in there. All right, let me find my spot. I'm going to go here. All right, so first we're going to talk about the skin. So skin is the human body's outer covering and its largest organ. The skin makes up a barrier that protects the body from physical damage, ultraviolet light, chemicals, and disease. The epidermis is the outermost layer, so we can see that here in blue. The dermis is the middle layer, so we can see that here. It is almost like a, the light pink layer, the thickest layer. The hypodermis is the inner layer, so we can see that here. It is like the yellow bottom layer. So first, let's talk about the epidermis. So that was that top layer. It's the outermost layer and it consists 90% of cells called keratinocytes. The protein keratin makes these cells tough, scaly, and resistant to water. All cells are epithelial cells which do not contain blood vessels and less than 10% of the epidermal cells are melanocytes producing the pigment melanin. This pigment protects from ultraviolet rays and sunburn. And the deepest portion of the epidermis is the stratum basale, which is a single layer of cells that continually undergo division. As new cells are made, older cells are pushed towards the surface, and as cells die, they flake off. So if you think on your skin, it's always creating those new cells down towards the bottom in the stratum basale, and it pushes it up, and then the dead skin cells will flake off the top. Next is the dermis, so this is that pink layer in the middle here. It's the middle layer consisting of mostly dense connective tissue. The dermis contains blood vessels, sensory receptors, hair follicles, sebaceous glands and sweat glands and the dermis also contains elastin and collagen fiber so we can see in this dermis we have an artery we have a hair follicle we have different uh, sweat glands so different things within the dermis the bottom layer is going to be the hypodermis, and it's the inner layer of loose, flexible tissue that connects the skin to underlying muscles and bones. So we can see that down here. Fat deposits in the subcutaneous layer help to cushion and insulate the body. And the hypodermis is also called subcutaneous tissue. And we can see in the hypodermis there's veins and blood vessels. So both of these, the hypodermis and dermis, have veins and blood vessels. It's just the dermis, the epidermis that does not. All right, so temperature homeostasis. The skin is involved in thermoregulation through the activation of sweat glands. The temperature of the body is controlled by a negative feedback system consisting of a receptor, control center, and effector. So remember when we talked about, it's kind of similar to the muscles when we talked about you touch a hot stove and then it sends the sensory receptor to the spinal cord out the motor neurons and it causes the muscle, the effects are muscle to contract. It's very similar. Your body is the sensor that is sending a signal to the control center that is then causing the effector, so like the muscle to contract. So the effector is going to be something, which we'll get into, that will regulate your body temperature, helping it to cool down or heat up. So the receptor is a sensory cell located in the dermis of the skin. The control center is the hypothalamus in the brain, and the effectors include the sweat glands, blood vessels, and muscles, which would be from shivering. The evaporation of sweat across the surface of the skin cools the body to maintain its tolerance range. That's why when you're really hot, you sweat so that you will cool down. Hyperthermia is when the body temperature is above normal range, and hypothermia is when temperature is below the normal range. 
Increase in temperature causes vasodilation of arterioles in the skin and sweating. And vasodilation of the blood vessels near the surface of the skin also releases heat into the environment to lower the body temperature. So if we look at this diagram, what we want is homeostasis, normal body temperature. This is just the normal temperature in Celsius. Now, if we have some sort of imbalance, let's say that the temperature gets too high. So the blood is warmer than the hypothalamic set point. It activates the heat loss center in the hypothalamus, which is then going to lead to skin blood vessels dilating, capillaries becoming flushed with blood, heat radiating from skin surfaces, and sweat gland activation to create perspiration and allow the body heat to vaporize to help cool the body, which then leads to body temperatures decreasing, blood temperatures declining, and the hypothalamus heat loss center to turn off because now we're back at that homeostasis. If we're cold and the body temperature drops, then say this is because due to a cold environment or something like that, the blood is cooler than the hypothalamic set point. It activates the heat promoting center in the hypothalamus, which is going to cause uh, blood vessels to constrict and divert from the skin to go into deeper tissue to minimize that heat loss. And it's going to activate those muscles to begin shivering so that it therefore increases the body temperature, causing the heat promoting center to shut off because now the body is back at that homeostasis. All right, so let's talk about wound healing. So the inflammatory stage begins right after the injury when the injured blood vessel leaks transudate causing swelling. The proliferation phase of the wound healing is when the wound is rebuilt with new tissue made up of collagen and extracellular matrix. And the remodeling phase is when collagen is remodeled from type 3 to type 1 and the wound fully closes. So I like this diagram because it shows minutes after, hours, days, weeks, months. So the initial stage is that inflammation. We have all of these different things that happen in the body. You don't need to memorize these, but you know, you get a cut and you know, the macrophages go there because they are looking, um, to see if there's any like wound debridement or having to kill any bacteria, the neutrophils and monocytes. Again, same type of thing, seeing if they need to kill some bacteria. So all of these things happen in the inflammation stage. After a couple of days, we go to the proliferation stage. So skin resurfacing, dermal restoration, and then we go to that remodeling where the epidermis maturation, um, this might be where you have some scarring. And so these are the steps of wound healing. You don't need to know like all of the stuff that's listed here, but just know the initial stage is inflammation to proliferation to remodeling. And that, you know, during the inflammation stage, that's when you might see like swelling and leaking because you have all of those cells going there to make sure, you know, there's no bacteria and to promote healing and promote you know this the blood flow to that location so i would memorize this side you don't need to worry about the chart so then we have glands so glands in the integumentary system include exocrine glands that secrete products through the ducts so sebaceous glands and sweat glands are exocrine glands that secrete substances into ducts these substances then reach the skin surface so there's three types we have uh sedorpheous glands or sweat glands we have sebaceous glands which produce keratin and we have seraminous glands which secrete air wax so we can see that here um, we have a sweat gland sebaceous glands and seraminous uh, glands so let's talk about the first one sediferous glands or sweat glands secrete water and sodium chloride and serve to lower the body's temperature Sweat glands also help remove trace amounts of waste products such as ammonia. And sweat glands are either eccrine glands or apocrine glands. So eccrine glands are not connected to a hair follicle. They're located on the forehead, back, and neck. They're activated by elevated body temperatures, part of the body's thermoregulation that we talked about. And they secrete a salty solution or electrolytes and water containing sodium, chloride, potassium, bicarbonate, glucose, and antimicrobial peptides. 
So we can see that one over here in eccrine gland. And then an apocrine gland is connected to a hair follicle and it secretes an oily solution containing fatty acids, triglycerides, and proteins. It's located in the armpits, groin, palms, soles of feet, and bacteria feed on sweat and expel aromatic fatty acids producing body odors. So let's talk about pseudophorous glands or sweat glands which secrete water and sodium chloride and serve to lower the body's temperature. Sweat glands also help to remove trace amounts of waste products such as ammonia and sweat glands are either eccrine glands or apocrine glands. So first let's talk about eccrine glands. We can see over here the eccrine gland. It is not connected to a hair follicle. They are located on places like the forehead, back, and neck. They are activated by elevated body temperature. It's part of the body's thermoregulation. And they secrete a salty solution of electrolytes and water and contain sodium chloride, potassium, bicarbonate, glucose, and antimicrobial peptides. Then the apocrine gland is over here, which is connected to a hair follicle. It secretes an oily solution containing fatty acids, triglycerides, proteins. It's located in the armpits, groin, palms, and soles of the feet. And bacteria feed on sweat and expel aromatic fatty acids, which produce body odor. Then we have the sebaceous glands. So these are holocrine glands, which produce sebum, an oily secretion made of lipids and proteins that lubricates the skin makes it waterproof and makes it more elastic. They are connected to hair follicles and secrete sebum throughout the hair pore. And sebum inhibits water loss from the skin and protects it against bacterial and fungal infections. So we can see that here. And if we actually go back so we can see this is the sweat gland that is attached to the hair follicle. And then this is the sebaceous gland. Then we have seromonous glands, which are found in the skin of the ear canal, and they secrete a waxy substance called cerumen to protect the ear canal and lubricate the ear drum. So this is ear wax, and we can see the seromonous gland is located right here. Then we have the hair. So hair is an organ of the skin consisting of columns of densely packed dead keratinocytes, it structurally, it has three parts, the follicle, the root, and the shaft. So we can see the follicle, the root, and the shaft. And hair is found in most areas of the body. It serves to protect the body from UV radiation and to insulate the body from the cold. And the nails are organs of the skin found on the distal ends of the fingers and toes. They are formed of hardened keratinocytes in sheets, and they protect the ends of the digits and are useful for scraping or scratching. So that is the end of this module. So you guys can do the worksheet that goes along with the module as well as the quiz, and I will see you in the next module.